Okay, we were discussing uh, Muni Sutta, which is available in the Sutta Nipata. This is also a very interesting Sutta where Buddha discuss uh, certain, uh, we can say, fairly interesting uh, aspects of a saint. Now, the first one is actually related to his uh, seclusion. We already discussed this part last week. Where Buddha mentioned uh, Santavatu Bhayam Jata Nikete Jayate Raju Aniketa Ma Santavang Etang Ve Muni Dasana. Now, this is actually we need to understand now, even though now we are uh, me as a monk and you all as a lay people, so we are talking about this uh, particular sutta, and this sutta is actually directed towards a more secluded practice. A person who is uh, fairly, we can say, uh, a kind of a saint, living in in a particular village, we can say, but he is alone and uh, practicing alone and leading a very uh, dedicated spiritual life, and uh, that is what we are trying to discuss today. Yeah. I, May. So actually that so that thing uh, when we are completing the thing is uh, last time we discussed this is related to the uh, consciousness how consciousness is associating a particular place and then it is calling uh, it is someone something uh, associating a house and uh, later, if we are able to make it unassociating, not associating anything, then we can call it Aniketa Sari or certain certain other things like, as I mentioned in this Haridda Khani Sutta, where Buddha give a, or actually at this place, the Venerable Mahakachana, give an interesting explanation how the mind can be uh, not associating anything. Consciousness where it is uh, homeless, those aspects actually we discussed last week and now we can get into the next verse uh, this verse is going like this yo jata machi ja na ropa yeye jayant mas nanukpa vijji tamahu ekang muninang charantang addakhi so santipadang mahesi one who having cut off but has arisen would not foster what is arisen or nurture it. They call him a Muni living alone. That great Rishi saw the state of peace. Now you can see these verses are very concise but has a very deep meaning. So we can't immediately understand the meaning and we need to uh, sort of uh, go through it for some time and explore what are the possibilities, what are the areas that we can look into. And so that is how actually we can understand the proper meaning. So immediately we probably can't understand what Buddha meant here because each verse uh, talking a particular deep aspects of the spirituality. Now, whenever things are arising, so those things can be considered as <coughs> Sankata or the Patisamupanna or conditioned phenomena. So what typically happens is we grasp them and we hold them. We are not allowing them to take their own uh, sort of uh, lifespan. Rather we are promoting them and we attach to them. So likewise we intervene them. But on the other hand, uh, when someone is uh, fairly developed, uh, so he simply allows them to pass. He doesn't interfere. So as a result of that, what happens is they become more and more natural. And we are not interfering, we are not getting into any kind of uh, fabrication. Rather, whatever arising, so they simply see their own cessation. So as a result of that, so he may be having a very unattached mind, a dispassionate mind. Uh, and as a result of that, he is uh, maintaining kind of a relaxed mind. So that is somewhat highlighted in this verse actually in the next verse there's another aspect is highlighted 
व्या संखाय वत्तूनी पहाय बीजं सिनेह मस्स नानुपवेत्ये सवे मुनि जाति खायंत दासे तक्कम पहाय न उपेति संखा नाउ दिस इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एरिया सर्टेनली बुद्ध टॉक्स ऑन द वेरियस काइंड्स ऑफ कन्वेंशंस एंड अगेन हाउ रीबर्थ गोइंग टू हैपन so those kind of aspects are somewhat concisely highlighted in this verse in order to explain this first i like to explain you some aspects of uh, consciousness then karma and the craving now well, these three are actually very beautifully uh, metaphorically explained in certain suttas i have taken one example sutta here patama bhava sutta so in this patama bhava sutta what would the mention is that itiko ananda khammang kettham vijnanam bijam tanha sineho now you can understand these are the essential components in the say in the farming or in planting so you need seeds and you need a very fertile field and again you need water or moisture in order for those uh, seeds to grow so buddha say the similar thing is happening in this sansaric journey so vijnana the consciousness is operating like the seed and the kamma is the field and then the craving is the moisture now this is a very interesting uh, picture that we can uh, understand we try to comprehend so how vijnana becomes sort of a seed how kamma being the kind of a fertile uh, field and again how craving become the moisture so that is where all together is what we call as a kind of a living being so when uh, we can say a new life is born a new life starts so we can say the consciousness as a seed now it is having the potential to grow but it needs a fertile ground to grow it alone can't grow so therefore a field is necessary if there is no field if there is no place if there is no fertile ground then it can't grow alone and on the other hand even that is available if there is no enough water moisture that is also not possible so all everything have to be available then not only a proper growing a kind of a growth maybe plantation going to happen or similarly in our consciousness even if we apply this to the momentary experience say if we simply see and if we simply ignore that without having much interest then we can't say that consciousness had a very strong footing there it is simply seeing that just seeing similarly if there is just hearing we can't say okay immediately uh, consciousness has established there and now is growing and is fully established rather the hearing is just hearing a simple smelling if we simply know something i mean and we simply discarded that and we can't say that mind or consciousness is fully established there and now it is growing to the full fledged level so this uh, complete growing complete establishment require certain uh, say capacity not immediate so that is why buddha sometimes highlight ditte ditta mattam bhavisati sutte sutta mattam bhavisati mute muta mattam bhavisati vinyate vinyata mattam bhavisati so that is a kind of a restrainment that buddha highlights once we have grown to a uh, to a certain degree that don't now allow consciousness to a sort of feed just seeing is all right you you are, you are it is not that you are deliberately looking at something but while you are traveling while you are going say you saw something that's all but you are not registering it in your mind you are not going and exploring it you are not interested in that you are not thinking about it you are not proliferating about it seeing is just seeing similarly while you are traveling while you are say staying say you hear a particular sound just sound has happened that has gone it has disappeared that's it nothing registered in your mind and mind is not shocked mind is not bothered mind is not much disturbed you simply heard it and then it is gone so likewise if we are going through our experience so that means we are able to navigate 
to a kind of a, a path where various obstacles are available but still we are capable of navigating to that path now in this path also the consciousness needs some sort of a fertile ground consciousness needs some sort of a craving area so that it can grow then only we can say okay now a kind of a birth is happening a, a full-fledged human body is happening he is operating as a human being now on the other hand say uh, in a certain incident if you are applying say we are seeing and now you are interested in that now you have a craving for that and now mind is further interested of that now you are exploring that and now the consciousness has a footing now it is well established so likewise all these different uh, factors have to be fulfilled then only we can say everything is uh, somewhat uh, satisfied consciousness has found a footing and uh, now consciousness is well established but here uh, buddha mentioned kammam kettam vijnanam bijan tanha sineho avijja nivarananam sattanam tanha sanyojananam hinaya dhatuya vijnanam patititam evam ayatim punabhavabhi nibbatti hoti now this is how buddha explains the rebirth where you have a previous available a field of kamma you now say as a new consciousness <clears throat> as a seed that means the craving is also available uh, so you are operating as a being as a human being and uh, interesting point here further is that uh, uh, a continuation happens from life to life kind of a continuation happens in this uh, say in this situation uh, in the inferior realm in the karma realm in the rupa realm now we can go back to this verse in order to understand uh, what is the context sankhaya vattuni pahaya bija sinehe massa nan uppavecce save muni jati khayanta dassi takkam pahaya na upeti sankha now you know save muni jati khayanta dassi now this this person this muni is someone who is eager to end this sansar eager to continue or rather completely stop this sansaric journey he want to end it it is not that he is trying to continue it he is trying to prolong it rather he want to stop it now so that is his uh, vision save muni jati khayanta dassi now he is uh, looking forward for the end of this uh, sansaric journey a seer of the final end of birth and then and uh, he doesn't have the craving so that is one important ingredient the moisture the craving <clears throat> and sinehemas uh, nanu pavichi so he would not nurture it with moisture now the craving has to be fed you need to desire you need to uh, sort of promote that desire you need to support that desire then only we can say okay you are nurturing you are say watering but now he is not doing it he is not watering he is not nurturing the seed he is not nurturing the seed through the craving many many desires rather he is now calming down desires abandoning desires abandoning craving so as a result of that what happens the moisture is also not available the the watering is not available so that part is not available and one thing is that he is targeting end of the sansara end of this rebirth cycle the other thing is he is not promoting the craving the nurturing part the moisture part he is not promoting that either sankhaya vattuni pahaya bija now sankhaya vattuni now here we can say okay the field part so now he fully understood the ground so he has a full understanding about the kamma that ground fertile ground he has a fair understanding so in that sense we can say he is not promoting a person making kamma volitional activities as much as possible he is now fairly uh, not making new kamma already a recent kamma may be available but he is not generating new kamma so he has a full understanding about how kamma is operating first he understood 
okay this is the uh, say samaditi that he needs to operate the right view he needs to operate he has to abandon all the wrong activities unwholesome activities he need to operate in the wholesome side continue the good activities wholesome activities and later he is trying to understand okay now i don't need to identify with any of these activities either wholesome or unwholesome so now he is very much like disclaiming all the i making my making that's a very deeper we can say understanding that he is having so he's not identifying with any of these so what happened is now the comer newcomer is fairly reduced the generation of newcomer is fairly reduced and the pahaya bija and he has completely abandoned the seed now he is not giving opportunity for the consciousness to grow as a kind of a condition phenomena as a growing phenomena as we discuss as a person who is having a house now he is not going to do that always he is now trying to keep the consciousness without a house without footing without giving ground without giving fertilizer without giving moisture so the consciousness is therefore we can say it is not the typical a conditioned consciousness or fabricated consciousness so such fabricated consciousness as much as possible he introducing so if you can remember into the patisa samuppada so the mention avijja paccha sankhara sankhara paccha vijnana so when there are ignorance available so that ignorance promotes more and more formations more and more fabrications so more and more fabrications more and more formations means more and more that fabricated consciousness or conscious uh, established consciousness conditioned consciousness but if we are able to minimize that if we are able to minimize the formations fabrications that means the possibility of generating new consciousness or established consciousness is very less so now consciousness become unestablished unassociated or we can say it doesn't have a footing so that is the area so this particular muni is now sort of targeting because his aim his vision is to end the sansara he want to stop it he want to stop the endless journey so how he is going to stop it is very beautifully highlighted here where he is not promoting that established consciousness and he has a proper understanding about the field that is the kamma and again he is not promoting fertilizing the craving and his vision is to end the sansara so this you can see i mean in this very small verse so all this depth you can say the essence of whole vipassana is uh, very concisely included so we, we have to explore it in depth to understand how deep the meaning is if we simply look at it uh, from the surface we can't get that but when we are analyzing it a little deeply and uh, get some uh, uh, light from certain other suttas then only we understand oh my goodness this kind of depth is there into this verse so likewise this is very interesting uh, sutta and again we need to understand okay it is not the typical mundane things that would the highlight here but rather very interesting very higher level of training to the highlights here so it doesn't mean that we are immediately into that it doesn't mean that we can immediately do that but this is the direction that we need to move so we have to have kind of a direction in our practice okay this is the area this is the direction that need i need to mature in my vipassana practice so this kind of verses is giving that uh, light giving that direction and giving that guidance and buddha's words actually is promoting that so buddha's words actually highlights that and give that clear direction okay this is the area that you need to target so you need to target okay i need to end the sansara stop this rebirth cycle if you want to do that okay now you got to uh, avoid promoting desires rather you need to abandon desires abandon craving and again uh, you need to understand some about something about the kamma as well so that is the field so you don't do any unwholesome activities which may prolong your uh, sort of sansaric journey and even when you are doing the wholesome activities 
don't identify with them don't try to say that i am the one who did it i am the one who did it rather don't promote that sort of an ignorance avijja anuse the the tendency of uh, ignorance don't promote that rather allow things to happen i mean prompt say impromptly you are happening things are happening you are in spontaneously you are acting acting in the sense appropriately you are taking the decision you are taking an action but you are not claiming oh i am the one who did it you are not promoting a self view out of that activity rather you are simply continuing it so that is very much uh, a very kind of a very clear direction buddha is giving a very strong type of uh, determination direction is given in this verse how one is targeting the end of rebirth cycle how one one is targeting the end of this sansaric journey for him a very clear direction is given by the buddha in this sutta in this particular verse okay with that i like to conclude today's dhamma sermon now i like to open the session for questions pero sarana avasara bante yeah uh, we have five questions today right okay uh, so first question is a dhamma sermon question this is actually from uh, uh, the previous week uh so this dear bante this question is based on dhamma talk on muni sutta 29 gen bante explained very well how unmindful unmindful dwelling in the form feelings perception and formations can lead to getting driven by these as well as rising of defilements and more and more dwelling creates a whirlpool or tsunami of the negative scenario which binds us to the sansara as i understood we can develop mindfulness and enable the choice of not getting driven and stay away from the above ripple effect this seems like that is the only one choice or path of staying detached from the negative process without abiding and being free there is no positive process to cultivate at this stage is my thinking correct bante with metta that's the another question uh i can say actually <clears throat> and you, you you need to do it but in order to do it you need some positive uh, sort of uh, qualities without it you can't do it say for example uh, now you need to now even today we discuss that point okay you need to uh, have kind of a continuous mindfulness so that consciousness is not established and craving is not fed and you are not accumulating come now these things can't i mean even though we call it we talk it as a theoretical thing we can't do it practically unless we develop our mind uh, with the necessary good qualities so therefore the path is it is true that we need to do it we need to implement this this is the plan but in order to implement this plan we need all the skills what we are targeting we need mindfulness we need a fair amount of clear comprehension uh, say we need energy the courage effort uh, and again we need uh, faith confidence and again and again we need to look at the situation and need to understand properly what's right now going on and fully aware if there is kind of i making mind making happens and then we need to abandon that so likewise it's a kind of a combination of many things now even though the plan is available we can't implement it unless we have all the necessary skills so developing these skills is therefore part of the practice and once these skills are uh, fairly growing now we can start implementing the uh, the plan and that further in, improves our qualities improves our mindfulness improves our wisdom and therefore i so i can part, partially agree with you but not totally because a uh, fair amount of uh, good qualities necessary skills are to be developed in order to implement the plan question number 2 of 7 this is a general question dear bante with the sitting and walking practice i started being mindful on the day to day activities which i do alone when brushing teeth i try to observe the sensations when holding the brush during brushing activity and while rinsing and finishing off i feel the hardness of the brush on my fingers how the hand movement occurs 
how the bristles feel on my teeth and gum, the softness of the toothpaste and taste, etc. However, my mind snaps multiple times to various thoughts and mind-made stories during this time. Based on Bhante's advice, this is the nature of the mind and I can be aware of it, of that. But what alarms me is that the rate of distraction is very high. If I compare with sitting and walking, I can say there can be less than five distractions during the first 10 minutes. But when brushing teeth, this can be as high as 20 or more, meaning every two to three minutes, uh, every minute, two to three times the mind distracts and come back. Is this due to the soft nature of sati during the day-to-day -day activities, Bhante? Much merits for your valuable insights. That's the end of the question. Yeah, it could be because uh, in the day-to-day -day activities, we are not giving em enough emphasis to that activity. So we may be uh, maintaining kind of a uh, relax or lapse type of uh, awareness, not full, full dedicated kind of awareness. So at the beginning, uh, we need some kind of a uh, deliberate type of mindfulness otherwise mind get uh, distracted but interesting thing is as you are continuing uh, and again when you are say navigating towards the uh, some some uh, levels of vipassana then mindfulness become available for you and you don't need to deliberately establish then you are fully aware of what is happening right now on such situation mindfulness is effortless it is not deliberate purposeful type of mindfulness what what you have is a very soft awareness very say effortless mindfulness at that time hardly no no uh, distraction very much like and even there are things uh, you are fully aware even things are happening and you are fully aware of the whole thing you are not completely into conceptual proliferation you are not completely into mind made type of world rather you are well grounded Therefore, don't worry. I mean, uh, at the moment you need so this kind of purposeful, deliberate type of mindfulness. Otherwise, mind get distracted. That is how we all have to begin. But later, things may grow to a say, better level. Question number three of seven, mindful walking. Dear Bhante, during the walking practice, I focus on the lower part of the body and sens sensations on the soles. I can mainly identify and observe how pressure transmits on various parts of the soul and the differences between the left and right. These days I find more attention around the areas where no sensation exists. These appear as patches in the middle of the sensations which are more or less blurred after 15 to 20 minutes. I can suspend the attention on these unknown areas similar to suspension of awareness above the walking process when auto walking happens. Don't know if these two are the same or different phenomena and thought of checking with Bhante, with Metta. That's the end of the question. Yeah, actually, uh, when you start your practice, say you can distinctly know these different phenomena that is uh, that is welcome. But as you are continuing, everything start mixing, everything appear like a kind of a flux. And at that time, you, you your mind is not interested of looking at it. As a result of that, now mind is uh, sort of uh, maintaining a distance. Now it is a detached observation, a dispassionate kind of observation because there is nothing uh, uh, significant is there or nothing interested is there and you can't uh, find out the boundaries, everything is mixed. So this is uh, quite all right. So it's the evaluation of the process, sorry, rather the evolution of the process. So at the beginning, it is true that you can distinctly know different, different phenomena. Fine, no problem. But as you are further and further investigating them, now you understand, okay, everything appears the same. Everything is behaving in the same pattern. Everything is subjected to arising and passing away. Everything is subjected to decaying, disappearing, fading off. And they are all beyond my uh, sort of uh, control. So that understanding is growing within you. So as a result of that, now everything is very much like mixed up. Everything like blurred. But at that time, I mean, it is not that your mindfulness become blunt. As a result of that, things become blurred. Rather, now fair amount of dispassion has grown. And uh, what the mind is interested in is not the individual phenomena or individual characteristics. Rather, now it is taking the whole bunch. Everything is... Uh, showing the same picture 
unattached, dispassionate kind of thing is there. So therefore, I mean, uh, so this sort of evolution is possible during your meditation session and you can welcome that. And the important thing is you need to continue the practice even though they are appear appearing unattractive or not interested, but you need to continue it. You need to continue the practice and even when they are not attractive and even when mind is uh, sort of uh, dispassionate, you, you got to continue the practice and then it is further growing that this passion is that this passion is further growing the unattached observation further growing and the seclusion of the mind further growing so that is necessary so therefore you can continue the practice question number four of seven general question dear swami Mahanse, is there a method or technique to identify the times we are not mindful when I observe sensations of the body, a sound or some thoughts as a third person, I inferentially understand that beforehand I was not mindful. Example, when I wash hand, I feel the water flowing on the skin, coldness on hands, etc. So I know I'm mindful. After a few hours, when I eat, I observe the sensation of taste in the mouth. So I know I'm mindful. But in between these two deliberate mindful awareness activities, can I assume I was not mindful with metta? That's the another question. Yeah, we can say so because the thing is still we need some kind of significant activity to be mindful. So at this level, that is the situation. Say, so in between the situation is very much blurred because there is no significant activity. It's a kind of a transition between two important activities. So therefore, mind has ignored that. At that moment, mind is uh, very much like unmindful. But during the two important activities, yes, mind is mindful. But the later, actually this gap also become available for you and you can be even mindful during the gap. Just to give a simple example, now say uh, you are practicing sitting meditation and now the time it is available, now the time has indicated for you to go and do the walking practice. Now, while sitting, assume that you are able to maintain mindfulness. And while walking, also assume that you are able to develop mindfulness. But how about in between? How about the time that you are rising up from your seat and then you are walking towards the walking path and you start walking practice? So that transition period, most of the time we are not mindful because we ignore that part. We think, okay, sitting meditation, sitting session is the important one. Walking session is the important one. So we are targeting those two, uh, say, activities, ignoring the in-between transition period. But the important thing is to continuation of the mindfulness. Okay, while sitting you are mindful and then you are getting up, again you are mindful. Now you are walking towards the walking path. Again you are maintaining mindfulness. And now you are walking and again continuing the same mindfulness. So likewise, if you are able to, uh, say, maintain kind of a continuous mindfulness so that is the best but immediately we can't do it but slowly don't worry so these little little gaps that you have missed are going to disappear and the whole kind of a continuous flow of mindfulness may be available in the future i mean it doesn't mean that we are able to have a perfect mindfulness from the beginning of our day until the end of the day we have a perfect mindfulness in the future it is also may not happen but overall, you can understand, okay, most of the time, now I can maintain mindfulness. Only only very rarely, I may get unmindful. So that sort of an assess ass assessment probably may be available in the future. So therefore, just continue. And uh, the, the, the thing is that we are certain activities, we are very much labeling, okay, this is an important activity. So I have to be mindful when you are doing it. On certain things are we simply ignore, so we are not mindful. But how about maintaining kind of an attitude, okay, each and every activity is something important. Each and every activity is important for me to develop mindfulness. So if you are having that kind of an attitude, probably you can further improve. Um, question number five of seven. This is a Dhamma Saman question. Dear Bhante, today's Dhamma talk, come is the feel, consciousness is the seed, craving is the moisture. 
while experiencing some form of an atta- unattached mind in the practice time to time, can we think that this unattached nature is represented by not having craving or damned craving momentarily? Exactly. That's the end of the question. Exactly. So that is why. <clears throat> That's why I was even now I explaining. Now, as a result of the practice, instead of passion, instead of craving, instead of desire, what we are getting is the dispassion. Now, as a result of that, now the mind is detached from the process. So the, 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 the craving is very much like uh, temporary subsided. So craving is not operating right now. You are not feeding. You are not feeding the mind with craving. Rather, that watering part, moisturizing part is not available. So, so when mind is not grasping anything, that means craving is not operating. Question number six of seven is again a Dhamma Saman question. Dear Bhante, if we are not going to identify with the wholesome deeds, how can we get the support from the merits in our sansaric journey? <laughs> when should one abandon these good deeds identification? That's the end so of you, the yeah, you can you can donate them to others. <laughs> so that is the interesting part of this practice. So you can say uh, now uh, as you are growing in vipassana, so you are more and more trusting about yourself. You are more and more trusting about the path, not much about the merit in a way. So, and what we are developing is, we can say a higher merit. So, as Lokusana say, used to say, it's the Adikusala. So, what we are trying to accomplish in the Vipassana is we are the Adikusala. It is not the mundane kind of merit. So, if you can remember certain suttas, where Buddha mentioned, uh, say, Vipassana merit is the most uh, sublime kind of merit. When compared to the other type of merits like, say, donations, uh, say, to these people, that people, and donating this, donating that. So when compared to them, the Vipassana merit is the most uh, superior type of merit. So don't think that uh, that you, you may uh, run out of merit. <laughs> so actually what we are doing, doing is a more and more sublime kind of merit formation. In order to continue that path, you need to sort of abandon even eye making, mind making. So that means, yeah, very much like a fading of the defilements, fading of the craving, fading of the latent tendencies. If you are promoting a self, if you are promoting a person, if you continue the self identification with respect to the, say, uh, what we call, uh, or some deeds that is also a samaditi but it's the mundane level of samaditi so as you know Buddha talks about two levels of samaditi the first part is the mundane type of samaditi the second part is the super mundane type of manda, samaditi so when one reaches super mundane type of samaditi he is uh, not promoting the identification he is not promoting as a self he doesn't want to highlight as a self. He doesn't want to establish as a person, individual, a self. Rather, he understood, okay, nothing is substantial. There is no component in this whole body, no component in this whole, say, mental activity that I can call as myself. So that's a kind of a deep understanding that he is now uh, sort of trying to uh, continue. So as a result of that, when even when a wholesome deed is continued, conducted, he is not going to identify with that as a person, as an individual. So that's a kind of a later understanding. So don't worry at the moment, thinking that you may run out of merit to the long sansara. Rather, if you are continuing this path, so the path will take care of you. Dhamma will take care of you. Question number seven of seven. This is the last question and it's a general question. Venerable Bhante, could you please explain what what is meant by consciousness in Buddhism? Much merits for your explanation. Yeah. Mm. Consciousness in Buddhism. So that is uh, where we call as the Vijnana, uh, say the cognitive part 
say uh, the knowing part is attributed to the consciousness say through eyes you can know a form through your ears you can know the sound through your nose you can know an order through the tongue you can know about taste through the body you can know about the tangible and through the mind you can know about the mental objects so that's knowing part is attributed to the consciousness and that is why it is called vijanati the the knowing so exactly you know okay this is what happening uh, so the consciousness is we can say in that sense is the cognitive part where you do the cognition and uh, and the interesting thing is uh, so this cognition is fairly conditioned by so many other factors and we need to uh, so the cognition is erroneous in a way you can't get the proper uh, true picture through the cogn uh, through this uh, cognition process so it is being fairly conditioned by so many other things so ultimately what consciousness cognize and show you is kind of an unreal picture so that is why buddha mentioned uh, consciousness is somewhat similar to a magician so magician the task of a magician is to show you some magic but we all know that it's they are not real but unfortunately we love to see magic we enjoy magic similarly here the consciousness is presenting us a kind of a picture but we tend to believe okay this is true this is the real this is the this is the true nature but uh, unfortunately consciousness does with some various other uh, the components it does so many other fabrications value additions value subtractions or different uh, say fabrications and ultimately it is presenting something beautiful or something attractive and we get caught to that and we highlight it as a person he highlight he highlight it as a a woman a man uh, whatever it is and then we being carried away by that so therefore uh, it's a kind of a vast area and buddha mentioned uh, through the development of wisdom you can understand the activity of the consciousness and uh, ultimately we can say uh, through the vipassana practice so we are now trying to understand the full operation of consciousness and as we just discussed we are the, the aim of the muni is to uh, minimize the established type of consciousness the fabricated kind of consciousness because he understood the 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 falsified nature of this whole process thank you bhante so we come to the end of the uh, questions today there is a bit more time but since bhante is busy with the uh, poe program today we will end the program now so uh, first i would like to thank bhante for his valuable time also share the merits with the organizers and all beings both seen and unseen who en- enable this program i would also like to thank and pass merit to the participants for joining the program today and for practicing and sharing the questions teruan sarnai sadhu 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 yeah teruan sarnai